It's time for the Gizwiz with Mad's Maddest Rider, Dig D. Bartolo. This is episode 1726, recorded Wednesday, May 8th, 2019. A big puzzling show. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have waffles here. We know that that's really what you want. But we also have three gadgets from Time to Play Magazine's Spring preview we also have another entertaining gadget and a gadget that you may want to buy in the gadget warehouse all next on the gizwiz it's the same show with dickie d and omg chat on your pc it's time for the gizwiz because gadgets are his business they've got a gizmo sickness geek disease under pathology rows and rows of usbs growing growing leds get ready for the gizwiz now 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 and here he is, the only guy you would trust for gadget brain surgery, Dick D. Bartolo. <laughs> How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing fine, sir. And you? Doing good myself. Doing great. How Just was got... your adventure? <laughs> it was very adventurous. So uh, to fill people in, uh, my birthday was you know, on the 14th of April, so about half a month away. And uh, when I did my big 32-hour stream, some of the folks in the... Um, community surprised me with a birthday camping trip that they were I found out on Sunday that they were coming on Thursday to kidnap me and take me away to a uh, camping trip and it wasn't really camping it was more glamping we had a cabin and it was in this awesome area of Texas um, near Dinosaur Valley State Park there's a really Ooh. cool zoo sanctuary type thing called Fossil Rim uh, right there and wow. so we went to go see Fossil Rim, and we did this really cool behind-the-scenes tour where um, it's really a safari uh, sort of atmosphere, even though they classify themselves as a zoo. So they, they're classified as a zoo because they have all these different animals, but it's really, there are no pens, there are no um, enclosures, there's no pathways. You kind of have to either take your own car or sign up for a safari, or what I did was, sign, or what we did was sign up for a safari and get a behind the scenes tour with a tour guide that walked us all around. So it was awesome, it was incredible. Uh, one of the whole community uh, uh, pooled their money and got me uh, a few gifts. One of them was a brand new camera lens. It was a 18 to 35 Sigma 1.8 f-stop lens. Uh, love it, I have a, Canon T4i, so it's an APS-C sensor, so it's a crop sensor, so it's not quite 18 to 35 on my camera, but still, it's way more wide angle than anything I've had at that fast of an aperture, so really, really happy with it. Just to show off some of the photos. Uh, oh, I, whoa! I took that weekend. This is the safari, that is a oh, giraffe poking oh, its head. Wow. And that's uh, one of the uh, friends who went with us, Drew. Um, here's a photo of me and that 1.8 F aperture that, that aperture size really makes that depth of field, uh, very shallow. So that's why you get that really blurry background. That's what I'm, this is that lens, uh, right here. Super happy with that lens. Oh, um, great. So anyway, so these are some of the photos of the adventure. This is you just saw no T-Rex walking around? No T-Rex. Now, oh. this area is known as Dinosaur Valley, and that's because they found a lot of dinosaur um, <laughs> footprints and stuff. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a, they gave us a little cup full of pellets to feed oh, the animals. Oh, so oh, oh. He's trying to lick up these, uh, these pellets here. This is a Ooh, uh, wolf. Wow. So this is in the behind the scenes area. Like I said, there was no really enclosures, and that fence there is is uh it's not really meant for folks to come by and look at these animals this was the behind the scenes part where oh, they okay, are okay. they're you know this is a sanctuary to help rehabilitate animals and um things like that so this i believe was a red fox that was either the red fox or there's another one but here this was my favorite was the cheetah wow they have these cheetah that uh they have a, a bunch of cheetah and these are all male cheetah. And apparently in the cheetah world, females rule. And uh, for a long time, they couldn't figure out how to mate uh, male and female cheetah. They weren't getting any uh, babies. And it's because the female has to 
agree on the mail before uh, anything oh, happens. Oh, wow. And a prenup. Basically, basically, because they like she ha so they have created this area where she can basically browse all these guys <laughs> and decide they call it lover's lane and oh my she can look at all these different male cheetah and decide on which one um, she likes. And oh so my gosh. there they are just kind of. Chilling out. This is not with that lens that I got. This is with the kit lens, uh, the 35 to one, no, 18 to 135 uh, lens. And uh, here's the last. Oh, get out of here. Oh, Dennis loves giraffes. Oh my gosh. Isn't that awesome. These giraffes were incredible. There was only two animals that we were able to hand feed like this. Uh, it was the giraffes, as you're seeing here, and also emu. The emu you could hand feed. These giraffes were so polite and so nice. I now, probably now is that have, giraffe huge uh, uh, or? That's more of a baby. Um, a baby, okay. Yeah, that's like a medium-sized giraffe right so, there. So this person is on the ground feeding the giraffe. We are actually in the truck. So that is still, truck, that okay. hand is probably five feet off the ground, four to okay. five feet off okay. the ground. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they, they're, that was incredible to be that close to, to all the giraffe. Oh, um, wow. Because they were so gentle. They really did feel like um, elongated horses, like really polite horses. Um, it was really, really, really cool. And one of them was named Mika. And um, I got another gift, which is about a five foot tall giraffe that I had a real hard time getting <laughs> home. It was kind of a. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of a prank gift. It's like, here, have this gigantic giraffe. giraffe. And uh, so anyway, so uh, that's, um, no, I didn't see any doves, Captain J. Um, they did have a lot of just basic deer um, and, and that sort of stuff. But we saw elk and all sorts of animals. I can't even remember everything. Um, it was awesome. So anyway, long story short, I had a wonderful weekend, got some cool new gadgets and, uh, and just had a great time. It was just a really, really wonderful time. Excellent, excellent. How about I was you? On the, uh, I was on the other end of the spectrum. Uh oh. Uh, in the middle of a big thing with with Spectrum, uh, I'll shorten it. it. It was a six hour ordeal that hasn't ended. Uh, so my cable was going going crazy. I spoke to a guy at uh, Spectrum, and he said uh, we can get someone there tomorrow. I said tomorrow's Sunday. He said uh, no, that's fine. We can get someone there. So the guy wow. comes. Uh, checks the cable with his uh, uh, instruments in the apartment. He goes, you know, I have to go to the roof. So he goes up, he goes back and said, you know, the connection was corroding and let's uh, look now. I said, oh, it looks great. He yeah, said, okay, bye. Okay. Three minutes later, he's gone. My picture goes out and it says, if you want to activate your service, call spec. Oh my gosh. So I called him and I said, I explained what happened. And he said, oh, we just reboot your box and your cable will be back in a minute. What's the box number? I, you know, I give it. And he goes, uh, no, that's not your box number. <laughs> I said, I'm standing at my box. Yeah. He said, well, there's no such number. <laughs> I, I, so I said, sir, I've had this box for like five years. He goes, well, we'll have to send someone tomorrow. Oh, so the, no. they send another guy and he comes in and he checks the cable and he goes, why are you calling? This cable uh, is great. It's great. I said, yeah. Wonderful signal. It's great. He said, yeah. I said, hook it to the box. And he said, oh. So he calls and uh, he starts going up the scale to get higher yeah. and higher. And everybody says there's no such box. So finally he gets something called box tracer. <laughs> And the box tracer said, uh, that customer handed that box in yesterday at 3 p.m. and got a new box. Uh-huh. Yeah. About the same time the tech was out, I assume. Yeah. I, I said, like, 3 o'clock yesterday when the tech guy was here. And so the, my, my, the new guy said, well, can't we activate the box because it's still here? And they said, no, it's now registered as being in a warehouse. <laughs> ask, the, ask the customer if he wants to go to the warehouse. I said, what? <laughs> so the woman. So, wait, wait, so you had to go to the gadget warehouse to grab the box. Yeah. Just to, OK. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they said, give him a new box. Take that box. 
And then listen to this. Tell him to go to a Time Warner Center with the number of the missing box and tell them, don't bill me for this box. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my so gosh. I, I started tweeting. Does anybody know anybody at Spectrum? Fortunately, a, a friend of mine, Joe uh, Bolana, said, Dick, this is an old, old Time Warner escalation department number. And I called him, and my God, it they still are in oh, business. Golly. And, and I explained it, and the guy said, he said, listen, go to why would you have to go to a store? Uh, he said, you know, I have all the serial numbers. We'll get somebody on this and get it taken off your account. Now, it's still in my account, so hopefully it will be solved. <laughs> but so all I can think of is that the guy, you know, maybe he needed a cable box <laughs> because – I don't have that cable box that's in my record. I had so, till the so guy So there left. is a cable box in your record. It's not the one that's hooked up. It's No. Yeah. Huh. Anyway. Anyway. So well, the new guy gave me a different cable box. That is in my record. But so is the one that the first guy said he gave me. So that's what they're trying to get off my record. So they don't start billing me for the extra cable box. It's not easy working with Spectrum. No. AKA. It Time makes me Warner. realize how much I appreciate my service provider. <laughs> Cuz like I ever since moving into this place, it's been 3 years of fantastic service. Uh which is it feels wrong to say that out of my mouth. Like I I have moved and lived in so many places from Austin to SF to LA. And not one time did I have a good experience with an internet service provider, cable provider, DSL provider at all until here. And the only thing I can think of is because this is a new building, a new, a, a new construction, is they must have laid uh, fiber to when they built it that is really robust because I have had zero issues other than That's the great. power going out and it taking five minutes to reboot the router, <laughs> which is a hundred percent understandable. Um, well, what's the name of that weird. cable company? We should mention their name. AT and T. I don't know. Oh if you've heard my of them gosh! Or not. <laughs> this well, is you know it's weird. It's like uh, I, it has. Oh, I, I'm on their gigabit yeah. service, so I have a, a whole gigabit to play with. So if there's ever wow. a fifty percent slowdown, you're still working with five hundred. I know we, we shouldn't anyway. have mentioned their name because right now someone at AT and T is saying, <laughs> "What do you mean by good service? We're AT and T." This is not. This is. This will really hurt our bottom line. Let's go <laughs> figure this out. Dis disconnect that guy. Yeah, I know. Um, so I'm. I. I it's funny because your story just makes me realize. When it, you know, whenever whenever something's not an issue, it just kind of fades into the background. Oh, hello, yes, Walt. yes. <laughs> um, uh, and so, yeah, man, that is frustrating. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. All right. Well, you had a good week. I had a bad week, but next week we'll have both have great weeks. Right. Exactly. It's exactly. Just how how it works. It's the plan. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we were talking about time to play uh, magazine showcase, um, and this. These three are things that are not toys, particularly for kids. One of them is. But the first one is the world. Maybe this is for you and your family, Chad. Ah. The world's largest. And when you hit the dimensions, you will believe it. Jigsaw puzzle. Oh. So here's the uh, video. Months of entertainment. Hey, we all know the name Kodak. <laughs> And Charlie here, I'm going to ask him a question. Is this the world's largest roll of film? <laughs> Dick, that would be a very large roll of film, but it's not a roll of film. It's actually the world's largest puzzle for sale. So you can actually buy this puzzle right now and put it together. Is it 51,000? 300 pieces? That's correct. It's 51,300 pieces. It's 29 feet by 6 feet. Wait, tw 29 feet? 29 feet? It's a little, feet. little taller than you, Dick. It's a little taller than you. You need a big space for it, but it will be incredibly fun putting this puzzle together with friends, family, 
whoever you want to sort of uh, group together with. You almost have to have an organization to, I mean, so do you pick one of these pictures? You could actually, the puzzle is 27 wonders from around the world, including all these images. You can put them together separately and then link them all together as one. Oh, oh I, I see. So th th these don't interlock. So right, they, they do interlock, they all interlock, but you could still do them separately and then interlock them after you've done one scene. So D Dick, you could do one with, you could do one, Dennis could do one, other family and friends could do one, and then you can link them all together into that one big 29 foot by six foot puzzle. Oh. So what, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know what? That won't fit in my apartment. I, do you have a little one? You have like one this size for my apartment? We do. That, that's, about, that's about right, right? We have, the New York City apartment. That's, about, that's good for a studio apartment. Studio, two bedroom, three bedroom. <laughs> no, we have piece counts from 100 to 1500 piece. So anything that suits you, we, we have it. And you also have one that lights up here? We have a puzzle that lights up. So who knew there could be novelty in the puzzle business, right? You think it's just jigsaw, it's the same thing, but... We actually created novelty in the puzzle business by doing a light-up puzzle, 500 pieces, it comes with 20 LED lights. You put the puzzle together, you put the lights in the holes, and you have a light-up puzzle. Okay, so tell me the price from the cheapest to this guy. Absolutely. I will act, well, okay, so these, these uh, small ones are about $5.99, and then the 1500 piece goes up to about $14.99. And then the biggest, the world's largest puzzle for sale, guess how, can you guess how much? Uh, I'm gonna say $299. It is $600, but again, for you guys, $599. $599. And you need to rent a studio, 29 feet. Absolutely. Uh, I guess 31 feet, because you want to have room for the people to build it. That's true, you gotta have additional space for, for <laughs> Okay. Humans. You know what? I'm gonna take this piece home. It's from this puzzle. They'll, They'll drive know. themselves nuts. All right, <laughs> can't be that mean. Okay, bye. That is crazy. So in <laughs> order to, uh, it's not lose hope while you're building this gigantic puzzle, it sounds like you have a whole bunch of little puzzles together. Yes, that you so, can you're right. so it's 20, it, it, there are 27 photos in that gigantic thing. And because it's Kodak, they're saying they're the most realistic and the most beautifully scaled and they're on hardboard. So you can have 27 different puzzles and then the borders will interlock. So you'll end up with uh, 28 and a half feet by, I think it's uh, 75 inches. I mean, that's, that's a big puzzle. Um, it's and ridiculous. it's $25 cheaper I mean, just look on, at this on guy Amazon. There. <laughs> uh, they, they spent five days putting this together, and now he's passed out as a silhouette yes, on top yes. of it. Um, I don't even think I have... Uh, anywhere in my entire house that's 28 feet long like you know if, if you if you had a crazy group i guess the ultimate thing would be empty all 27 puzzle bags onto the floor oh my gosh and then try to build the entire puzzle at one time that would which be would probably oh a lifetime of work I couldn't imagine. So, uh, so each each puzzle is in a bag. Yeah, it's in it's a, okay. each puzzle is nineteen hundred pieces in its own bag. Oh my gosh! Yeah, what, and then what, and then when there. you put it together, you get the twenty eight and a half by uh, that is six insane. and a half feet. <laughs> insane. I mean, I, I mean yeah. I'm trying to think. The only thing, the only reason you would do this is like if you need like an accent wall. A twenty, yeah, like a twenty-eight foot accent wall. Like, okay, let's <laughs> put together a puzzle, figure that out. Golly, yeah, I know, not not terribly practical, but uh, something fun to talk about. One person's already yeah. done it. Well, They've already reviewed I know. it. What, Look at that. There's only there's only one review because everybody else is still building them. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's in Spanish uh, or something. That is so crazy. I that that, is, I'm that impressed. Is. And who knew Kodak? Kodak. Yes. Kodak right. Well, is Kodak is uh, licensing their name out. Real Kodak is, I, right. I have to look it up one day to see if anybody ever bought that uh, eight millimeter film camera that they introduced for $3,000 um, two CSs ago. I'm sure someone did. <laughs> probably. A director, probably. Probably, yeah. probably Martin Scorsese and yeah. uh, Steven Spielberg bought them. Yeah. They're just sitting. They're using them as coasters now. 
<laughs> Remember when Kodak came out with that three thousand dollar camera? Hilarious. They didn't tell us they were going to stop making film. <laughs> That's insane. That's that is quite a find. Fifteen thousand pieces in a yes. single puzzle. In a single puzzle. Uh, all right, the second one is a kid's gadget and kind of fun. So I'll show you our video, and then we have a little um, minute and twenty second video from the company. So here it is. All right, we're still at the Time to Play Magazine Spring Preview. And what are we watching here, Alina? We are watching Cinemod. It's a portable movie theater with a lot of preloaded content towards kids. We have 40 Disney books, 25 safety videos, and hundreds of hours of other kid-friendly educational content, like shadow puppets, lullabies, bedtime stories. Can you add your own content to it? Yes, you can. And you can also stream Netflix, Amazon Prime, and YouTube videos directly from your device. In addition, if you are traveling, let's say camping or going on a plane, and you assume that you will not have a Wi-Fi, you can upload movies from your Netflix account or Amazon Prime directly on Cinemood and watch it without Wi-Fi connection, any cables, any other support. So it has an SD card slot? It doesn't have an SD card, sl card slot. It is a standalone device. It has memory in it and it has preloaded content. Oh, okay. Do you know how big the memory is? It is 16 gigabytes of memory. 16 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and what does that sell for? The retail price is $399, however, we often run promotions that are $349. And the battery life is uh, five up to five hours. The screen can go as big as 12 feet. 12 if, feet? Yes, if it's a dark environment and darker setup, you can create a massive movie nights with your friends in the backyard or in the back of your minivan. Now, uh, are the batteries replaceable or are they rechargeable? They are rechargeable. Rechargeable built-in battery. You can always plug in the uh, charger and just put the cinema on without to be well, afraid you can of always, like always run, run, yeah, you okay. Yep. And is there audio out in case you want to hook it to a bigger speaker? The audio is inside, so everything that you can hear right now is inside of this device. However, we do have Bluetooth and uh, audio jack, so you can connect your headphones for individual sound or speakers for a bigger, more uh, like sound. Audience. And do you know how many lumens it is? Cinemod is very safe for kids, so we try, try to protect the safety of the child as much as possible, especially when they blink with the okay. light into the eyes. So Cinemod has only 35 uh, lumens, okay. however, it doesn't uh, break the image quality. We still can deliver a bright and vivid image, and there is an autofocus here in case you want to like adjust the image clarity. Oh, okay, okay. And is it out now? It is out. We sell on our website. It's cinemood.com. We are on Amazon, Target, and Best Buy Canada Online. This is really great. The one problem is there's no popcorn in here. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Time to play magazine, the Gizwiz, watching movies. Thank Put on you. the Gizwiz show. It's like you're a comedy writer or something, Dickie. I don't, it's, <laughs> it's very funny. Um, so here's a better look at what the actual thing she had in her hands from uh, the company. Oop, I guess it's muted. There we go. They use the same music from the <laughs> iPhone X commercial. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. They're just mentioning every feature uh, that it has. Preloaded yes, content, yes. your Bluetooth speaker, all that stuff. So it's only it. three inches by three inches. It's not terribly bright, uh, 35 lumens, but I guess she said they did that so it's child safe. 
I guess and my, my biggest question is, what, what, what is the advantage over just handing your child an iPad? And, and, and to answer my own question, it would be to share the content. Um, so, you know, you could have more than one child looking at it. If so, one had this on a camping trip. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Imagine you could show movies to everybody. Exactly. Um, um, and then maybe like, uh, the, the fact that it has preloaded content, that's, that's exciting. And the fact that it can, it's all on there. You don't have to stream it. So if you're on an airplane or something, but I would feel like a little bit of a jerk if I had my kid projecting. <laughs> I know. I, I, I was wondering when I saw that on an airplane, where yeah. you going to project it where on the snack tray? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I, I, on the snack tray and then you'd have to wear headphones. So why yeah. not just, like you said, why not just look why? at your phone or your yeah. iPad? Um, I anyway, cool. just, I, I do think it's cool. I mean, it's easy to criticize cause like, it's basically just a Pico projector made for kids. Um, yes. but I still think that there's a market for it. I, I still feel like someone, someone out there is going to yeah. want this. It's kid friendly. It's nice. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, only, she it's, oh, it's resolution is a little, little low. What's the resolution? Apparently I'm bleak is saying that the resolution is only uh, 640 by 360. What? I'm uh, on the, on their ad. It says 1080p. Okay, that might that would be good. I'm looking for the specs here. Um, and uh, it, and it's 299 on Amazon, not 399. Um, that's good. Is it cheaper, Bleak? I see you're at BH Photo. Is it uh, cheaper? Cheaper? Can we project? <sighs> Game of Thrones. Yeah, I guess if you don't charge. Yeah. And and you don't let your kids watch it at all. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely take this product and make it a non-kid friendly device. Um, let me... It's quite hard to find that exact specs. I'm not sure where Bleak see that. Um, saw that. Okay. Uh, it's not It's not really... Uh, I believe it's Amazon that says 1080p. Okay. Da, 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 da. And, okay. I think the Amazon link is actually run by the company because there's a, <laughs> like a whole ad there. Yeah, I see that now. Yeah, so $300 on Amazon. Um, 1080p resolution. HD 1080p. Uh, yeah. The very, the very first thing. See, 12 feet, HD, 1080p. Oh, HD, yep, there, there it is. There it is. Yep. So, okay, good. That's that's much, 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 much better. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, I, I think it's I think it's a cool idea. Projectors have their place. You know, I use a projector myself. Um, so, I, I think it's, I think it's yeah. pretty good. I think, I think it's, uh, it, it's more fun for a kid to say, I have a projector and come on over in my backyard and I have a theater and... You know, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, adults are going to have the uh, new anchor projector. I forgot what they call it, but <laughs> yes, that's what they want. Yeah, <laughs> very, very uh, cool. Okay, so there, yeah, there okay. you go. Um, now the third thing is kind of weird. It's because it's not for kids. You have to be eighteen and up. They recommend to ride the world's smallest e-bike. Oh, okay, fun. here's the story. Okay. Here at Time to Play Magazine, the Spring Showcase. See this little guy here? I love this thing. This little guy here is actually that. Whoa. You, I guess it is. Is it the world's smallest? E-bike. The world's smallest? Oh, it's an e-bike. It's an e-bike. It's electric bike. Smallest, lightweightest e-bike in the world, which can fit into your backpack. That can fit into a Exactly. It folds up and unfolds in six simple steps. So you can put it in your backpack and take it with you anywhere you go. What does it retail for? We're going to retail it for $13.99, offering full price purchase or financing option. It's going to be offered on our website and on Amazon as well. And uh, it's the sale is going to start July 1st. And, and what's the range of it well, on one charge? It can go up to 20 miles. 20 miles and yes. the speed? Yes, the speed is 15 miles per hour, which is the law. Fiber frame, it weighs a mere 15. And this is from their uh, website. As soon as you're ready to ride, you can be on your way in seconds with five easy steps.
monitor your speed, distance, your lights, your battery, all while charging your smartphone. The S1 is durable and tough. It can easily carry up to 220 pounds. With its sleek, modern design, the S1 gets you from A to B in style. The Sma Circle S1 will keep you cruising at a speed of 12.4 miles per hour. The simple handlebar thumb control allows the rider to adjust speed. The left thumb brake will quickly and safely stop the S1. When your ride is done, simply use the Sma Circle app to lock your S1, making it unusable to anyone but you. Whether you're commuting to work or cruising through the park, the S1's adjustable seat and handlebars always make for a comfortable ride. The Sma Circle S1, the most portable and lightweight e-bike available today. Cool. I want one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they they it was an Indiegogo. They got five hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars. A five hundred uh, and sixty thousand. Uh, and I the the stats have changed a little because that video is two years old. So now she's saying it's fifteen miles an hour, uh, which is now the the law here in New York City anyway. And for a month, they say it's nine ninety nine. Hmm. I like it. Well, I, whoa, hello. I don't want to chat right now. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> caught you. Almost <laughs> caught you. <laughs> they got me. Holy moly. Um, that is now crazy. the wheels, judging from the wheels, you know, you're certainly not going to go off road on this no, thing. No, but it's like sidewalk uh, or pavement only. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a great thing. Like if you live here in New York, if you live out of the city and you have to take a ride to the train, this would be perfect for that. Yeah. And then fold it up, put it on the train. And when you get to New York, open it up again and then go to work because it's 16 pounds. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I, I could really see this being, um, especially in a everyday sort of situation where you charge it overnight, use this to get into town. You're, you're not sweaty when you get to work. Uh, that sort of stuff. I like it. Yeah. Um, sure. They need to rename it, though. <laughs> I, 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 the, the, the small circle. I said, small circle. Uh, uh, should we, uh, are you trying to say smart circle? No, she said small circle. Small circle. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what It's that like, means. is it small circle? Small. Small circle. Maybe they, maybe they should have put an L in there. That would have helped. Yeah. Then you could have done small circle. That would be good. It's small sickle. It's a yeah. it's an icicle. No, I don't. <laughs> That's weird. I agree. That's a very weird. A first but it idea. seems to be well engineered, and you know, yeah, headlights. Looks, and it looks great. I mean, the automatic like, lock, and as you approach it, it unlocks, recognizing your cell phone. I think it's pretty clever. Yeah, I like that too. Um, I think that it's really interesting that the wheels fold into what ends up being the body of the. Yes. Device. Very neat. Yeah. It is. And it carbon. Is a, a bit expensive, you know, thousand yes. bucks, but uh, I don't think that's that bad. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to buy one uh, anytime soon, but I still think that that's not a unreasonable price. No. Um, uh, I agree. Fourteen hundred, I'd have a real problem with, but if <laughs> right they out. stick with the, if they stick with the under a grand, I think they'll have pretty good luck. Right. 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 Yeah, I like it. Very, very cool. Okay, chat room, let me know uh, when uh, y'all buy them. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, uh, if, uh, could... it's, uh, I'm sure Captain Jay's going to say yeah, it's uh, sure. you know, 12, just 12 50 on. Make uh... sure to send in a uh, gadget <laughs> warehouse uh, once you purchase it. And that would be very much appreciated. That would be great. It's going to be $18 on AliExpress. <laughs> exactly. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> three <laughs> gadgets from Dickie D. It means one thing. You know you don't need it, ha. but you might ha. want Woo. it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Corner. Yeah. Get it. Get it. So it is time for Chad's Crappy, Chad's Crappy Corner, and today we are taking a look at entertainment gadgets. Gadgets that entertain, that excite, that kill time, because you're having so much fun. <laughs> Playing with them. 
Um, so this is a, uh, another sort of, it's a sort of toy, uh, sort of gadget. I kept it in its uh, packaging for us, and we'll just go ahead and open this up live and check it out. But it is this magic writing slime. So the idea is that it's just slime in this uh, little pouch and whatnot. But it comes with this, it's a light. Now they say magic pen included and some of these, it makes it look more like a laser. And like that looks like very laser-like, like bzz. But really it's just an, a little uh, LED light. And the packaging is neat because it can easily show sort of what its, its basic premise is, is that when this light hits the slime and turns off, it leaves this really cool purple color behind, and then that'll fade out. It's like it's glowing, but in reverse, where it doesn't actually glow, it just kind of darkens I see the, something the new for your next hair treatment. <laughs> there we go. This is it. This is what I need. So, uh, so anyway, so I got this just at a, uh, at a Walmart, so, so e very easy to find. And here is the slime. You know, slime became almost like a fad product for a little while. You know, everything was was slime related. Yes, it still is. We had a slime thing last week from uh, the time to play thing. It's ooh. There's a thing in the way. What is going on here? Oh my god. Oh, weird. They must have packaged it so that there was a little bit of slime in the top of the container. But anyway, okay. Once you get all the slime out. It's very slimy, who would have guessed? <laughs> and then, let me kind of stretch this out and see what we can write on the surface of it. It's, it smells like hair gel. Okay, what should we write? What should be our first message? The Gizway Show. Okay. Oh, that might be a little bit, wow, that's G W S. G W. <laughs> S. I guess that's, that's that's pretty neat. It's also it also has a definite cool factor that I can really see it happening right in front of my face. So let me see if I can get this close to the camera here. Uh, ooh, it really does look like it's burning into the slime. My human eye can see that happening a lot better than the uh, the webcam can. But that's actually kind of cool. I kind of like it. And then when you're done with it, you know, I guess you just wait for it to fade, fade away. away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can, you know, manipulate it into a new area. Okay, let's let's see if I can uh, do the giz whiz. Okay. G G uh, G e oh. Z Oh, it fades fast. It does fade fast. Yeah. Hit, hit that G back up. I. It's kind of cool. I kinda yeah, it like is. It. I think kids would have fun with that. I think kids would have fun with it too. And when we see how quick, quickly and easily, ooh, it gets back into the container. Eh? Huh? Ugh. Get in there. Ew. Ew. Okay. There we go. Container. Container contained. And then I guess we could even write on it out here. We could. Oh, you can. Look at that. I actually really if like this. If, uh, if you're a neat freak, that's the way to do it. Yeah. There you go. He's happy to see you. Look at that. Wow. Well, how much is magic slime? So, magic slime, magic writing slime. And by the way, this is made by Slime Factory. Also, I noticed that there's this little cutout at the bottom, and I really thought that it was to hold this thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't hold that at all. So these are two separate pieces. One will get lost eventually. Um, I picked this up at Walmart for only about $5. Oh. Uh, it was $5.88. Now, I could only find it online for about $7. $7.44. It has three customer reviews in the reviews. I'll be honest, not that good. Oh. Got a few a few bad ones. Some people didn't like it. Not not a two-pack. Oh. 
they thought that this would be a two pack of slime. Does it say that? It might say it may have said that in the past that this is yes, a yes. two pack of slime. But I gotta say that it's it's kind of a fun little gift. I think that the science element of the fact that the uh, the slime will change colors right before your eyes it's kind of cool. Oh, did I? Oh, I pointed it in the wrong direction. There you go. <laughs> You're right um, on the wall. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of neat. I, I like that's, it. That's so, good. Yeah. Um, it seems seems like something. And nothing on your hands, right? Your nothing hands on my totally. hands, yeah. other than other than some hair gel smell. It's, it smells okay. a little bit like hair gel. Okay. Um, and that's it. So there you go. Some uh, writable slime, the magic writing slime from the Slime Factory, which is pretty pretty cheap. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. On. And I am not in the warehouse. But I have a gadget that might be in the warehouse. So let's take a peek. Okay, let's check it out. This is a very unusual Dick's Gadget Warehouse uh, feature because normally I go to the warehouse to get an old gadget. This is one of the few times I actually bought a gadget Whoa. brand new that is Dick's Gadget Warehouse worthy, okay? Uh, it won a CES Innovation Award, CES 2016. The JBL Smart Base. It's a way to have your phone on your dashboard, uh, hook it up with Google, with Alexa, you know that person. Uh, so it's brand new. I just bought it. Okay, and I'll tell you why I just bought it. Oh, here we go. I've not even opened it. So we're seeing this for the first time. Ta da! The smart base. You know, JBL makes really nice stuff. Very big in making car and marine audio. Uh, I had JBL equipment on several of my boats. Boy, this is JBL quality. All right. It looks all the right. design oh, wow. looks nice. Whoa, a mega suction cup. All right. And whoa. Okay. Wireless Qi charging. Uh hooks up with Bluetooth. Built-in microphone. Um, okay. I know that there are twin speakers in here, so they must fire over in these. Yeah, I can see a little outline. So twin five watt speakers. And now obviously this is for cars. So it comes with a cigarette lighter attachment. Uh, what do they call them now? Uh, auxiliary docks or something like that. Uh, so I have probably one of the few offices with a 12 volt power supply. Oh, wow. Uh, so that we're going to. Hopefully, is this going to go in here? Boy, all right. I'm going to put that in there. And I'll just take out one piece of wire. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to make sure this turns on. And then I'll tell you why I actually purchased it. And then we'll come back and we'll take a break and I'll hook it up to my Bluetooth to see what it sounds like. Okay. Uh... Anybody know what DFU is? <laughs> okay. DFU. <laughs> it has DFU. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. So the mic is thing. It's blinking, I guess, to pair up. Uh, so I'll tell you why I bought this. So CES 2016 Innovation Award. Manufactured suggested retail. $199.95. 200 bucks. Uh, within a year, 99. Then 69. And then last week, I got the deal of the day, 39. And I thought, you know, for 
This would make a, a great thing for the Gizwiz show. I'll just buy it. And just before I hit buy, I thought, you know, deal of the day. You're not quite sure how long it's going to take uh, them to ship it. Let me go to Amazon. And if it's within a few dollars at $39, I'll just buy it because I'll know I'll get it right away. So I go to Amazon, thankfully, because... $19 JBL Smart Base Wireless Audio System Adapter ADAS Navigation Built in Bluetooth Google Assistant Sari Qi Charger for Android and iPhone. $19 Liquidation Sale, and now how baby. much would you pay? Anyway, um, it is on. So, what we're going to do is we'll take a quickie little break. And when you come back, I'll just play a little bit uh, through this so you can hear what the audio like. It should be good because it's JBL. Come back. Okay, we're back. We're paired. Okay, and... Isn't that pretty nice? Wow. <laughs> anyway, the sound is is excellent. I made a phone call with it, and the person on the other end said, "God, the the uh, voice is excellent. It has noise reduction uh, microphone in here." Uh, okay, Qi charging. So this is a sticky pad, and I'm going to stick it on there, and we should dum, bum, bum, there. Okay, it's now charging the phone. I think this is great, uh, especially for $19. Ah, okay. And finally, I should show you this, all right? Whoa. This comes with it. This goes in there. This is to flatten out that suction cup on your dashboard. <laughs> all right. So I'm guessing I can probably use this on my boat. Yeah. You know, I have a, a, a flat dashboard. It's fiberglass, so it's nice and shiny. This suction cup should uh, stick could even to be on your really, nightstand really if you're a Californian, well. prone to earthquake. And then, um, <laughs> uh, earthquake proof, yeah. yeah. Take phone calls right through the speaker system here because uh, my boat doesn't have Bluetooth speakers. Uh, 19 bucks. There you are, Amazon. Dick D. Bartolo, the Gizwiz. This is not. <laughs> this is not going to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. I may actually use it. That is a good deal. I mean, uh, yes. Wow. Ne- it went up $2 or $3 uh, since last night, but... Oh, no, it's back. It's back down. It's back down. Okay, yeah, it's back down. Now, I'm I really mean, confused on how they have Google Assistant and... You know what? It's just huh. using it through your phone. I think that's very misleading. Yeah, but I didn't think very you could even get... Oh, Siri. For some reason, I thought that said uh, Alexa... I don't want to set, set off people's Oh, echoes. yeah, yeah, right. Okay, that's what I was okay. thinking. Okay, yeah, yeah. So oh, it's just, yeah, it just uses... It's just phone. using your phone. I see, uh, I but see. that thing in the back, do you have any idea? Let me look on the back again. So what the uh, chat room what is you, saying is that that connection port is for firmware upgrades. So oh. you, you would use that um, to, uh, to, to plug in some type of firmware update. But this is such a nice little Bluetooth Qi charging speaker system. I'm, I'm serious about putting it on your nightstand. I mean... No, I think... Uh, it's so well built. Yeah. I, I am really I- impressed with it. And uh, if you click other places to buy, someone has it for $17.99. However, I went to JBL's website just to see if they took it off the website. It's still there for $199.99. Of course, yeah. Whoa. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, someone just has a warehouse of these yeah, things. Yeah. And- this is a be- through a better mic. <laughs> I, I really feel like this is a great nightstand product. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, forget the car, because uh, unless if you have a car that's a rather old car that has bad Yes, speakers, it has to be very old. Exactly. It's like a very old car, no Bluetooth, and even the speakers are going, because you otherwise, why would you use the JBL speakers? You would just use your car speakers. Yes, um, yes. So, or the boat, which doesn't have speakers, that's a great yeah. situation too. Or your nightstand, where you'd want to play some some audio and chi charge at night. Yeah, 
I mean, I, for, I, for that mu- for $19. That's, there's <laughs> a lot of things I have bought for $19 that yeah. are like yeah. a monotask, like yeah. a, a clock, a wall clock. I would buy just a wall clock for 19 mm. bucks. For this to be uh, Bluetooth, answer calls, have a microphone and a Qi charger installed. Incredible. Exactly. And the uh, phone update um, can yeah. also charge. So it said if you don't have a cheap phone, use the phone update uh, a USB to, uh, chi- to charge something via a, a wired charge. You know what? That might so not be DH. It was DHL? DHL. I'm wondering if that means that you could uh, plug in your phone there and it would pass through if it doesn't have a Qi charger. Questionable. Um, Questionable. Sure. I'm making mm. guesses that you could just plug your lightning cable USB A oh. into the back and then like lightning into the phone or you know USB C or USB micro or whatever. Um to uh, I, I don't know. But for nineteen dollars you can find out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Very cool. Again, Isn't that warehouse neat? fine. That is a that is in the category of products you bought and loved. Uh, yeah. the gadget warehouse. I love it. But you can see that it was not a terribly good success. When something is selling for ninety percent off, <laughs> yeah. So Scooter X found the manual on JBL's website and says the DFU port is for connecting a phone via USB, according to the manual. So that's that's what it says. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you are. Too much. I hardly. <laughs> Bleak says I hardly know this show anymore. Too many good stuff. Too much good stuff. Where are the crappy gadgets? Yeah, I know. I know. Slime, you let me down. I thought you would be dry and disgusting. <laughs> it was a good product. Gosh, I hate good products. Okay. Uh, hey, send in your good products to the Gadget Warehouse. Um, we need your videos. So we need your videos. Yeah. Uh, two to three minute. Just put it up on YouTube. Click on listed. If you don't want anybody to stumble over it and send us the URL, it goes to mail at gizwiz show. Is it mail? It's mail at gizwiz TV. Okay. And if we, you live in the U S and we show it, you get a mad magazine and an Alfred Newman photo. That's now 38 years old autographed to you. If you live outside the U.S. and we show it, I'll autograph a photo, send you a high-res image to print it out in where, whatever country you're in. So anything, a video that has anything to do with a gadget. Perfect. With that, let's move into the letter. All right, so actually Kevin Dilworth forwarded this to me via Facebook saying, Dick, this is a very interesting gadget, and okay. it's bizarre. <laughs> that kind of looks like uh, uh, that first shot. It almost looked like uh, Alex Gumpel. I don't know if you remember. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. A little bit of Alex. You're right. Alex. Yeah. Gumpel, look here. Oh, oh yeah. that is way too big. I accidentally made that a large this screen. I'm trying to figure yeah. out how yeah. to... Get rid of this weird sidebar here. Go away. Okay, eh, that's good enough. Here we go. Wah! Wah! It's a little, okay, so for those on audio, it's a, it's a little, uh, uh, what a curtain. You say? A, a curtain. It's a curtain for your face, so people don't have to look at your gross mouth as you eat, except it's almost just as gross because it, it <laughs> is hung <laughs> by your nose. Yes, that's right. It will right. revolutionize the, clip, clip the way you nose. eat. That is an understatement. Yeah, that is. Right. And the curtain oh. opens. Oh, wonderful. Oh, this is great. <laughs> yes. Now, of that, course, you would you would sound like this. Hello, I'm in the middle of eating my salad. Uh, it's good that you can call. I, I have my mouth curtain in right now. My mouth curtain is really the best uh, device I've bought all year. I'm going to send that into Dick's Gadget Warehouse any moment now. And, and Beatmaster said, sure, now no one's going to look at you God. when you have a curtain stuffed up your nose. So, you know, I don't know if it's a joke or not, because I could not find a place to buy one. I doubt, yeah, I think that's... 
It has to be, right? Uh, Somebody with but, a 3D printer just made that. I feel oh, like. Oh, that, that's probably right. Like, it's, come on. This is, very, now, I have heard that, uh, you know, some, you know, you don't want to... You don't want to show your mouth at all, but also you could just chew with your mouth closed. You know, that would yeah, just that, be a yes, solution yes. right there. Or Wait, man, done. take a tablecloth. <laughs> there you go. Hold the tablecloth up like that. Yeah. And then no one will really notice you. That's, I thought that that was what bandanas uh, from cowboys were used for. Is you just put that right up on the, around, you know, and then you just eat underneath it. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. And then um, afterwards they thought, you know what? Since we have these on, why don't we start holding up banks? There you go. No one. But I think you're right. I think you're right. I think yeah. they originally were food oriented. It was a food situation. Ha handkerchiefs. Right. Exactly. They were called. When they said put it in the bag, they meant the salad that they were eating. Yes, exactly. Um, and that it just got way exactly. out of hand from there. They were called fobs, <laughs> food oriented bandanas. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Kevin, for sending that in. That is a that ridiculous video. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, you know what else is ridiculous? Uh, the, the what the heck is it game? We got to figure out what the heck this gadget is. Uh, this is the gadget, the whole gadget, nothing but the gadget right here. Um, and uh, this is uh, it's obvious uh, to me that this is a... Uh, a green bean holder. It'll hold a single, like, green bean. Like, yeah. Maybe a very expensive stock. one. Yes, exactly. This is, this is a cryogenically sealed green bean holder. <laughs> if you think you know what this gadget is, get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. That's where you do your business. Gizwiz.biz. There are six mad magazines for correct answers and... 12 men magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. Have you had a look at the guesses yet? Do you know if people people really know what this uh, is? Uh, this, so far, no one knows what it really is. Really? Yeah, so Ooh. that's good. I that's think I know. Good. I think I know. Fortunately, I know. now, you think you do know? I said a green bean holder. Yeah, what do you want? Oh, well, no, okay. I'm just, okay. I'm just, I'm just oh, No, okay. I, think I, I think I actually do. I think so. Yeah. But, well, don't uh, tell me for a month and a half. Yeah, I won't tell you for a month and a half. <laughs> um, so get a guessing. It means that, uh, hey, there's still some, some mad magazines on the table. So get a guessing. Uh, big, humongous thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. They support our show every single episode. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Big thank you. To those of you who are supporting right now this show, even if you've supported it in the past or if you hope to support in the future, just a gigantic thank you. Waffles thanks you from the bottom of her <laughs> paws. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting the Gizwiz. If you like the Gizwiz and you like supporting independent content on the internet, please head on over to patreon.com slash gizwiz. Uh, and support. That's a, a recurring time. Every time we upload an episode, uh, you guys give just a little bit, and we're seriously only asking for a little bit. Uh, less than your less than your Netflix uh, uh, subscription <laughs> is completely viable. If for some reason Patreon is not your jam, that's not what you want to use, you can head on over to gizwiz.tv and click on the Patreon tab, and there's a PayPal link there on that page. Hey, while you're there at gizwiz.tv, why don't you check out the show live? We are live just about every Thursday at 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. Next week we will be at, at Thursday, uh, and then the week after we'll be on Wednesday uh, for some schedule changes. If we ever have a schedule change, there's a nice uh, banner at the top of the website that uh, lets you know that we are recording at a different time. And of course, if you don't catch the show live, you can always see it after the fact on demand on our website, gizwiz.tv, or you can subscribe on your favorite podcatcher of your choice. Huge thank you to everybody who is in the chat room right now. You guys are absolutely amazing. And uh, we'll see you. Uh, chat room, the chat room is great. Chat fun. room's amazing. Awesome. And we'll see you next week. Bye. I'll be here. And so will Waffles. Waffles.